It's been scarcely a few hours since I've been back in my studio in Sydney, but I feel that I need to make this video for you guys to stop something bad happening to someone somewhere in the world because of this new fad on YouTube, which is heating up knives to 1000 degrees and cutting into random household objects. It's taking the internet by storm and I want to make a video describing my concerns over setting things on fire that really shouldn't be burning anywhere near you. Let's get started. Welcome back to Maker's Muse guys. So as I said, I don't usually make videos like this, but I feel I need to make a video just sort of announcing some of my concerns to this new fad. So this is Mr. Gears YouTube channel. And if you are regular on YouTube, you would have seen these thumbnails cutting into everyday objects with a 1000 degree knife heated up with a blowtorch. And then it just cuts into random things from, you know, firecrackers supposedly to plasticine that's a new one to a, a Samsung Galaxy uh, phone all of these items are just cut into with a knife that's superheated to a thousand degrees now this seems pretty innocuous I mean heating up something and just cutting it it's just good old-fashioned destruction I love smashing things I mean I build robots I love trashing stuff but there's a few things that I need to point out when it comes to melting things that shouldn't really be melted. I work with 3D printers. If you're new to this channel, Makers Muse, I usually do 3D printing reviews, tips and tricks, but this video is more to kind of bring people aware to the risks of melting and burning materials in their home that can actually be toxic and life threatening. And I'm making this video not so much because of Mr. Gear's channel, because he's often zoomed in and you don't know where the fumes are going, but more to the reactions that are happening because of this fad. I mean, look at here. We've got Comedy Shorts Gamer, you know, 7.6 million subscribers, and he's started to do these superheated knife or whatever videos. I think he's got a katana or something cutting through everyday objects. But the thing is, you can cut through objects that will produce pretty much no fumes, maybe some smoke, nothing too dangerous, but there is everyday objects in your house that can kill you if you set fire to them. And I want to make that clear and bring that to you guys' attention in this video. So let me start with one of my favorites, polycarbonate plastic. So polycarbonate plastic is used quite often in very tough, robust enclosures. It might be a smartphone case. It might be an enclosure for a game controller, maybe mixed with ABS plastic. ABS and polycarbonate mix is a very common choice for enclosures of electronic products. Now, ABS is not that great. It's a, poly it's a petroleum plastic. When you burn it, it's not the best, but it's not too bad. Polycarbonate, however, is a little bit more, a little bit more sinister. So let's go into a MSDS for polycarbonate. So what I have here is I've got an MSDS from Redwood Plastics. I have no idea where they are, but well done guys, you've got a very nice MSDS of polycarbonate plastic. So as I said, this is a clear plastic that's often used for very tough enclosures. It's actually the same stuff that the Mythbusters use for their bulletproof shields. They're not actually bulletproof at that thickness, but they are. it is a clear plastic that's very tough. I've used it on robots before, and it's a very nice resilient plastic. But when you burn polycarbonate, nasty things happen. So let's go down to the firefighting measures outlined in the Redwood Plastics MSDS, which is a material safety data sheet. So auto ignition temperature, very high, 450 degrees C, but again, we are setting fire to it with a 1000 degree knife, so that doesn't really matter. What we want to see is what can occur when it combusts, when it burns. And often you'll see in these videos, the materials do catch fire, which means they produce noxious fumes. So carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide. Okay, that's a very common byproduct of burning something. Carbon monoxide will kill you in large quantities, but in this case, not really a big deal. Your car produces it, you know, you're in a city, you don't die. There's a lot of carbon monoxide, but it won't kill you in the quantities we're producing it. And carbon dioxide, as we know, unless you can't get oxygen, also won't kill you. Bisphenol A. That may sound familiar to some of you. There was a massive scare a few years ago over bisphenol A leakage into water bottles. So you might have gotten a polycarbonate water bottle. Again, it's a tough plastic, works very well for water bottles, but there's a whole risk of this bisphenol A, which is used in the production of polycarbonate, to leak into the water. So now you get BPA or bisphenol A free water bottles. But depending on the brand of polycarbonate, especially if it's not designed for food contact or food use, there may well still be bisphenol A in it, which may be released during combustion. That is super toxic and it's a known carcinogen 
and I would not want to be anywhere near that. Then we have a few others like phenols and uh, we have various aromatic hydrocarbons. Aromatic, don't let that fool you, that is not a good thing. You do not want to be breathing in aromatic hydrocarbons. And then there's other things which I don't really know what they are. Acids and aliohydes. I'm not sure what they are, but basically the, the takeaway here is there is various, various compounds in burning polycarbonate that you don't want to breathe in. So that's polycarbonate. Let's move on to another plastic that I quite like. P-O-M, which is otherwise known as Acetyl, which is kind of a brand name. So you have Lexan, which is a brand name for polycarbonate, and Acetyl is a brand name for P-O-M which is a very tough engineering plastic and it's used a lot for high wear components that need to be plastic but they need to slip and slide across each other with very low friction and long shelf life or long use life rather. So uh, you can get 3D printing filament in POM which I will test later in the year but the thing about POM is it's also known by another name which is polyformaldehyde. Yep that formaldehyde, the one that's used to preserve things in little specimen jars in your local museum. Formaldehyde is super toxic and POM or polyformaldehyde will release formaldehyde when it's heated up and beyond its melting temperature. Now it's currently a bit uh, unsure whether when you're 3D printing with POM whether it's a dangerous thing. I always recommend people to have a ventilation system But burning POM will definitely release formaldehyde gas and that is something you totally don't want to breathe in and I'm not even joking here uh, Formaldehyde is not Good for you. It is a poison in terms of the actual uh, heat resistance of uh, POM or polyoxymethylene copolymer it is actually quite high. It's got a melting point of 168 degrees C depending on the modifiers. So it's difficult to 3D print with. But if you have an object in your house that's quite durable and it's made out of plastic and it's designed for a long shelf life, it might be a car component or something like that, you're unlikely to be doing what Mr. Gear is doing and setting fire to with a knife. But it's worth keeping in mind that some plastics will actually release extremely toxic gases. And in this case, you're unlikely to know if it's POM. It's often used for I suppose internal workings of a mechanism you're unlikely as I said to see it in a toy but it's still not that great but you notice I mentioned toy and that takes us to the last plastic I want to talk about in this video here we have an MSDS for PVC polyvinyl chloride I hate PVC I'm going to be completely honest, I think this is the devil's plastic, but it's used in almost everything because it's so cheap to manufacture, it's super easy to use, and uh, you can weld it together with very easy to get solvents, and it's very durable, it's very resistant to most chemicals. But PVC stands for polyvinyl chloride, and when you set fire to PVC, it produces hydrochloric acid in gaseous form. I'm not even kidding. So PVC piping, when there's, an, when there's a fire in a machinery office or something like that, a workshop, the PVC piping will often catch fire and produce HCl gas or hydrochloric acid, which will then destroy all of the machinery in the room. So if it can quickly destroy and rust any machinery, imagine what it's going to do to your lungs. Now PVC is often used in children's toys and I think it's absolutely freaking disgusting that it's used for children's toys. But a great example is moose toys in Australia. You go to your local Coles or Woolies, look at the local junkyard kids or whatever they're doing. They're little painted figurines, you're meant to collect them. They're made out of PVC. Now this is a very often a very likely case someone will get one of these toys and think that's a great idea I'll do this viral thing on YouTube and set fire to it by cutting through it now it will produce poisonous gas hydrochloric acid in gas form is one of the last things you want to be breathing in and the reason I'm making this video is to kind of stop this sort of this hype of people trying to jump onto this hype train. Yes, I know getting views is fantastic. I know getting subscribers is fantastic. I value every one of you, but don't risk your life doing it for frick's sake. And I recently did a 3D printing burning test and I did it outside with a ventilation system. I don't want to breathe in any fumes. Even if I know the plastic is safe, it's not worth the risk. So guys, I hope you take this video on board and actually understand that yes, Cutting things on, you know, in half with a 1000 degree knife is tons of fun and obviously gets lots of views on YouTube, but don't put your health at risk. There is items in your house that will kill you 
if they're set on fire. And often when the fire does take someone's life, which is tragic, it's usually the fumes that does it, not the, not the actual fire itself. So thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this video useful. Again, I, I just do 3D printing. I am not a scientist. I'm not a chemist. This is what I know after learning years about the plastics I use for my 3D printing. I hope you found it useful. If you want to see future 3D printing tips and tricks, which is what I usually do on this channel, maybe hit the subscribe button. And I look forward to a much more pleasant 2017. Catch you later, guys. Bye.